Hello friends, this video on body movements part 8 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now joints are just one thing. Joints are just the location where movements are possible. Now the question is, uh, when you look at any organism, so for now let us consider human beings. So when you look at human beings, are you able to see their joints? Can you feel that? Can you see the joints which is present in your body? Not really from outside. Maybe at certain parts, for example, elbow, you can just touch and feel the presence of a hard structure which you assume to be joint. But you do not see anything from outside. Why is that? Because externally our body is covered with skin because of which we do not see the exact structures which are present inside. But what actually is present inside our body? There is something which makes the framework of our body. So think of this flower. So when you see uh, the picture of a flower which is like paint, painted red, yellow, green etc. You, it seems really nice, really beautiful. But how do you paint the picture of this flower? So in order to paint it, first of all you draw an outline. So this outline is nothing but the framework. So once the outline is ready, then you can just fill colors to make this beautiful flower. So in a similar way, the body which we see, like the human beings which we see, there also a framework exists. And that framework is nothing but the skeletal system. So the bones, cartilage, joints, etc. that forms the skeletal system. And then over this skeletal system, we have the skin which gives us what we see. So now we are going to talk about this skeletal system which is nothing but the framework of our body. So this is true not only for human beings but for all living organisms. So what is skeletal system? Forms the framework of the body. It is composed of bones, cartilages and joints. So all these three things they form the skeletal system and these three things together are responsible for various types of movements in our body. So we have already discussed about joints, so now we have to discuss about bones and cartilage. Now in order to, uh, if, if you do not trust that okay, our body has a skeletal system, what you can do is observe an x-ray image. So looking at this x-ray image, you can actually observe the bones which are present, the bones, the joints, their structure, everything can be seen very distinctly. So you see this is how the x-ray would look like for your hand. So from outside all you see is the skin, but inside you can actually see these bones. So these are all bones and they are all joined at some points and those points of contacts are the joints. So very clearly you will be able to observe the bones and the joints. So if possible try to have a look at an x-ray image. Now even if you have never gone for an x-ray, uh, maybe somebody else would have gone. Um, generally when do you go for an x-ray? Now normally when somebody fractures his arm or leg, uh, so in that case just to check that where the fracture has happened, whether the bone has broken or the joint is displaced, to see all those details an x-ray image is taken. So an x-ray image actually proves you that uh, inside the skin what we have is bones, joints and muscles and all of these together form the skeletal system. Now what is the importance of skeletal system? Now in very simple words, if you, if you do not have a framework, how will you have the, that particular thing built on the framework. So when you want to build a house, you need to have a design, you need to have a plan, only then you will be able to build that house accordingly. Similarly, when you want to paint a flower, you need to have an outline so that you can start putting colors accordingly. Similarly, the skeletal system, it forms the base. It provides a lot of protection because when you look at the composition of the skeletal system, it is made up of bones which are like hard and strong. It is made up of muscles, bones, joints. Now they are all like rough and tough structures. So they help to protect the uh, soft, tender internal structures of our body. Secondly, support. Now they form the basic framework, so they give us basic support to the body. Now we are able to stand, that is due to the presence of the vertebral column or our back. 
so that vertebral column is nothing but that is also that also has bones which are uh, connected together so all these joint bones together give that mechanical support movement now due to the presence of the joints bones and muscles we can make various movements so our movement is also possible due to the skeletal system so these three are the most important points because of which skeletal system is very very significant so to summarize we can say that the skeletal system protect the internal organs and soft tissues because uh, the components of skeletal system they are all hard and tough so they can protect other soft parts of our body they provide a strong base to prevent the body from collapsing so the body is able to stand on its own that is because of the skeletal system provide attachment point for muscles and the points where the muscles are attached or the bones are attached at the, all those points we can make movements in fact uh, it, it 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 should be a good fact to know that in an adult human being you do you know how many bones are there there are 206 bones there are so many bones in our body and all of these bones they are like joined to each other and at those joints we are able to make movements except for the fixed joints now when a baby is born do you think that the baby has lesser number of bones so this is an interesting thing to know now you know how many bones are present in a baby now normally you would think that a baby is very small so maybe less number of bones would be there but actually in a baby 300 bones are present but as the baby grows into an adult the number of bones reduces to 206 now do you know how the number of bones reduces that's because with growth many smaller bones join together to form larger bones so let's say there were four small bones now what happened with growth all these four small bones they joined together to form a to form one larger bone so in earlier the number of bones were four now the number of bones are is one so in this way the number of bones reduces so as a person grows small bones they join together to form a bigger bone Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.